Happy Saturday, synth lovers, sound lovers, everybody alike. Um, so this is Sound Paint. And if you are new to tuning in, you are welcome here. Whether you are a musician, a new musician, a lifelong musician, somebody who can't even carry a whistle and has never even played the recorder, you are absolutely welcome here. And what we're going to be doing today is exploring themes. If you are a fan of different fantasy movies and shows, and maybe even things that are based on a book, then I welcome you to the next several sessions. And basically what I call my nerd out sessions. So this was an idea that I've had in mind for a while because I recently watched Game of Thrones for the first time ever. Um, it's incredible, and I can't even get over how amazing this story is. Yes, I've watched all eight seasons, and I really loved the eighth season. There, I said it. Do you have a shred of honor? <laughs> um, but anyways, I have had in mind this idea where I wanted to compare the composer, um, the theme for Game of Thrones, with the theme for Westworld because it's the same composer and I have always absolutely loved the film scores for both. But I'm not gonna get to it just now. There's really no reason I'm telling you this other than I guess a little preview of what's to come. But the real reason that I decided to do this, so November is going to be Nerd Out November. I'm still playing with that. Now that I say it out loud, I don't know how I feel about that, but I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited. We're gonna we're gonna be uh, nerdy and get into some fantasy stories. But the real reason that I started this was my sister is reading the Silmarillion. I'm not even entirely sure if I pronounced that correct because there is so much in this book that is just. I think you'd have to be J.R.R. Tolkien to pronounce it correctly and not butcher his language. While we're being honest, I haven't finished watching Rings of Power. Uh, I will preface this by saying I am a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Literally watch all three of them every year. And they're just incredible. You know, I can... Holds up. I'm rambling. So my sister said, you need to read a few passages of the Silmarillion because it is so rooted in music. And this first chapter, I'm going to read to you. And I am going to go over the music for the opening credits of The Rings of Power. I am going to critique the music and we're going to see how the music holds up to what a big deal music is in this book. So it starts off, there was Eru, the one who in Arda is called Iluvatar. And he made first the Anur, the holy ones, that were the offspring of his thought. And they were with him before aught else was made. Aught, A-U-G-H-T, that's a cool word. And he spoke to them, propounding to them themes of music, and they sang before him, and he was glad. But for a long while they sang only each alone, but very few together, while the rest hearkened, for each comprehended only that the part of the mind of Iluvatar, from which he came, and an understanding of their brethren, they grew but slowly. Yet ever as they listened, they came to a deeper understanding, and increased in unison and harmony. So I'm gonna stop there because I don't know, I kinda I kinda like that because I feel like that's what we're doing here. You know, we're all learning together and picking up on things together, and it's just cool. So considering that music is such a big part of this story, I mean they're comparing it to light, which is super cool. I wanna ask you. We're going we're gonna to use some critical thinking. We're going to listen to the theme of the Rings of Power. Now, I don't know if 
the YouTubes will allow me to play this. I kind of doubt it. I kind of don't want to risk it. So I'm going to do my best to recreate just a piece of it. And here's a little bit of some music theory for you for today. Um, our word of the day is motif. So I'm going to play just one little musical idea or motif. And I already have set up my Analog Lab 5. So I didn't know it off the top of my head. So I've been listening to it all day to get it in my head. So this is my best ver interpretation of it. And from what I heard, it sounds like it's starting off with French horns. It has a very like regal, clean, bright sound. So here we have our French horn. like such a nostalgic feeling. Let me get a, this chord. All right. So what do you think about that? It's just a basic C major chord arpeggiated. And then you do it again, but you kind of speed it up a bit. There we go. I think it's pretty. It actually, for some reason, reminds me of an old Narnia, PBS Narnia film. And that note, that F sharp. So we're in the key of C major, which means there are no sharps or flats. So that F sharp hints that we're going somewhere else musically. And I'm looking ahead and it looks as far as I can go in this free version. It looks to be the only, oh no, we start getting some C sharps, some G sharps, some B flats. Don't worry about what all that means. But that F sharp is hinting at a different key altogether. So we're in the key of C major. That F sharp is kind of doing something. Another vocabulary word, it's tonicizing the G, which means that maybe we're not in C major. After all, we could be like flirting with the key of G major, but I doubt it. I think we're just flirting with the key of G major. We start in C. G major. So I would love to hear what you think about that theme, minus the crackling, because that's just awful. But I have really grown up listening to great soundtracks. And for the life of me, I can't remember who I'm quoting, so forgive me. But I heard a great composer, somebody, say that truly great soundtracks take risks and that we are moving into a new phase and a new era. And this is going back like maybe five to 10 years ago. This, it was what I was watching was like that old. And he was saying, we're moving into a new era where composers are playing it safe 
Because God forbid the downfall of a production be blamed on the music. But I believe that in order to be really great, you have to take those risks. You have to challenge yourself as a composer and you need to come up with something memorable, even if people hate it. I'm of the mindset that anything that evokes emotion is art. So if you look at a painting that makes you angry, it's evoking emotion and therefore the artist is doing their job. If you feel nothing, you're not really, as an artist, pushing the envelope enough. And I'm going to say it. I feel nothing. Except that. I felt that. I put my microphone here out of the way because it was here and I'm, this is all new. But... I feel nothing when I listen to this. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's not memorable. It's like for a show that had a budget like that, I feel like they really played it safe with this opening title. Sorry, Howard Shore. He's the composer, by the way. Um, you could have done more. You could have challenged us. And I really like I listened to this so many times today. That's my feeling. How do you feel about this new direction we're going to go for the next few weeks? I hope that you're as big a nerd as I am. Let me know what makes you nerd out and get you excited. So for me, it's soundtracks and fantasy shows and movies of that genre. Specifically, if there's a book to go along with it, because there's just so much depth to pull from. And I really love that this story, its depth is coming from a foundation of music. And I didn't know that. I think I actually might try to attempt to read this book. Difficult as it may be, I will get through it. But anyways, I've talked your ear off. Have a great rest of your weekend. And listen to some music. Listen to some soundtracks. Ask yourself how it makes you feel. Ask yourself if you feel nothing and what more could have been done. And I'm going to stop now because I'm going off on a tangent again and I could just keep circling back. Bye. Bye.